the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series is back in race action, which coincides with the 75th anniversary of NASCAR. But the rain stopped the race a lot of times at Daytona International Speedway. It was defending champion Zane Smith won the race. NASCAR ended the next era energy 250 after 79 of 100 laps due to the fifth rain shower of the night affecting the efforts of drying the track. Smith won this race last year and it's the second straight win for him at Daytona to start the season. He took the lead for the final time on lap 65 and the race would only continue for four more laps because of the rain. Here's Smith talking about how it feels going back to back after winning this race last year, courtesy of FS1. I know there's uh, about a million ways to get one at Daytona, but uh, we're proving that. So obviously wanted to, to go back racing there somewhat <laughs> um, to duke it out uh, with good friends of mine, actually. But um, hey, we'll take a win at Daytona any day we get. Just a huge shout out to uh, everyone at Front Row Motorsports. This whole group, man, they, uh, I've said it over and over again, they work their guts out and, and it proves it, So, uh, or they prove it. But um, locked in the playoffs, it's like a repeat of last year. Smith had a great weekend as he won the race and also made the Daytona 500. Here's Smith talking about the weekend and more, also courtesy of FS1. I love it. We never know what could happen in this Daytona 500. I can't wait for Sunday. Um, this, uh, this whole week has just turned into something special, so um, just loving life right now. Even though Tanner Gray got some damage in a couple of accidents, he fit a second. Kristen Eckes was third, Kobe Howard and Grant Enfinger rounded out the top five. It was Howard's first career top five. Here's Grant talking about his performance and more. Obviously, with the way our night was going, second is a good night for us, said Gray whose finish was also a career best in 72 starts. Not as smooth as a race as we like. I got caught up in about every wreck there was. All in all, came out with a good finish. That's all we can ask for. Gray was racing for the renamed Tricon Garage team, and he got front splitter damage in those incidents. On lap 58, the GMS Racing Chevrolet of Raja Karuf got loose and made contact to the Silverados of Matt De Benedetto and Daniel Dye, whose trucks had escaped serious damage in earlier accidents. Smith took the lead on lap 65 after a restart until rain stopped the race for the fourth time. On lap 74, NASCAR brought the trucks to pit road since the race stopped because of the rain. They tried again after the track dried, but only ran five more laps, which were under caution. Then the race stopped for good after that due to more rain. With 12 laps to run in the second stage, the 84 Toyota of Clay Greenfield spun sideways near the beginning of the trial bowl and started a seven-car crash, which involved Haley Deegan. Deegan was making her first start for Thor Sport Racing in the 13 Ford, and her truck suffered a lot of damage. The trucks of the Benedetto, Dean Thompson, Gray, Daniel Dye, and Brett Holmes also got different levels of damage in the incident. Here's Deegan talking about the incident and more. I saw the 84 Greenfield sideways, and that was pretty much that, Deegan said. I saw him going down the track, so I went up. It was a split-second decision. You just go right or left, and they end up bouncing back off, off another truck. So it is what it is. We know that Daytona is one of those races where you either fit in the top 10, or you end up on the trailer home. Not long after NASCAR called the fourth caution of the race because of the crash, rain affected the event for the third time. After there were light showers earlier, that caused two cautions. Once the race continued again, the 99 Ford of Ben Rhodes turned the 52 Toyota of Stuart Friesen into the outside wall on the final lap of Stage 2. Friesen was riding at the front of the outside lane, admitted he threw that block that went wrong. The trucks of Cody, Cody Rawba, Howard, Parker Kligerman, and Holmes also got damaged as Tyler Ankrum got the stage win on the caution. Eckes won Stage 1, which had two cautions because of rain. Pretty awesome to see the Craftsman Truck Series back in action on the track under that name. And check out their video I did, which I'm very proud of, of the Craftsman Truck Series coming back, which was a lot of fun to do. And I'll leave that one in the description, which I highly recommend you check it out, all of you. So what I thought about the race itself is it wasn't as exciting as what I hoped it would be, especially since I was so hyped that the Craftsman Truck Series is back in, in action. But what happened was because of mostly the raid, and the rain dampered most of the, the excitement because of the fact that it was stopping a lot of times. And the race couldn't get into a rhythm. And the drivers couldn't get into a rhythm either. 
there's like so many interruptions and unfortunately that's how it is over there daytona a lot of times in february with the weather and that plays a big factor with the rain and unfortunately it played a big factor in this race and the weather stopped the race too many times and it just dampened the excitement especially with the the one delay like towards the end of the fourth delay where it was delayed for one hour with the red flag and as a result, they went back on track only to be under caution for a couple laps after that long of a wait. And as a result, five laps under caution, four laps there, that few laps. And then they went back to pit road and the race was over there. So I don't know why they went back out there. I understood why NASCAR tried to do it. You want to give a green flag finish for the fans, which I'm, like, I'm okay with that as well. At least they tried. But still, though, if you got to run just for a couple laps, it probably made no sense to, to go anyway. But I understood why they tried it. So can't fault them for trying at least. But... So when they were actually in action, when it was green, it was exciting at times. A lot of side-by-side -side battles as well. Like very like, exciting when they actually were on the green. Especially, you see Zane Smith. Zane Smith, pretty cool that he got to win this race back-to-back -back as well. As, and he's had a great weekend, especially like now making a Daytona 500. Winning this race, he had a great year last year. Winning this race then too. And winning the championship with Frontboard Motorsports. So he's... He's like one of the favorites to win a driver with a championship. So it's pretty cool that he got to do that, especially. And I saw during the broadcast as well, during the rain delay, Todd Bodine, he was the last driver to go back to back at Daytona. He was, he was joking about, oh, that it, he, he didn't want Zane Smith to win because he figured, oh, Zane Smith will be the back to back wins as well. As Todd was the only one to go back to back in races at Daytona specifically. And also Todd was the last driver to win when it was under the Craftsman banner in 2008. When that last spot of the series, also, he won that race as well. It was, was pretty cool that he did that. And he was the last driver to have to go back to back. And he won like, that race at Daytona as well like the, to start the year then too in 2008. And he was also the last driver to win in general in the Crash and Junk Series in 2008 also. When he won the 4-200 that year as well at the end of the season. So he, he ended up winning the last time the Crash and Junk Series was, was sponsored at Daytona when they last sponsored the series. And when they last sponsored in the series in general in 2008 as well at Homestead. So that's pretty cool. He got to have those distinctions, those uh, distinctions there too, that honor. So that's pretty cool that he did that as well. And obviously the first time the Crafts and Chuck series ran at Daytona was in 2000, which then was won by Mike Wallace. So he had the honor of winning that race. Obviously that was overshadowed by the infamous crash with Jeff Bodine, which looked really bad. But he fortunately survived that as well, which was a miracle not him. So that's pretty cool like that. Crash and Chuck Series is back there as well. And I'm really excited for the season as well coming up. Especially especially the, the tracks they're going to be going to. Especially going back to North Wilkesboro. Going to back to the Milwaukee Mile. That was a surprise too. Especially the Milwaukee Mile. They didn't look like they were going to even be running anymore. Especially like they lost all their dates. They lost IndyCar. They lost Xfinity Series. They lost like Crash and Chuck Series. They lost all their dates. But that's pretty cool to see them go back to that track as well. They'll be racing back again at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Lucas Oil Indianapolis Raceway Park, if I be specific. And they, they went back to that track last year, so it's nice to see them going back again this year. And they'll be racing at Mid-Ohio, too, so that's pretty cool. So, that the schedule's got some more diversity, so I'm excited for the Crafts and Truck Series season overall, even if this race wasn't what I was hoping it would be. You feel, though, for Corey LaJoy, though, he, another race where he could have had something for the field that he could have won. He had a great run, led a lot of laps in this one. Unfortunately, miscommunication with his, his race team, Spotter and Crucci, all that, and that he couldn't make it to pit road because he didn't hear it. Like, probably they, they had miscommunication there or something like that. And, but as a result, he, he ended up not pitting what the rest of the field did. And, and as insult to injury, like on that final restart, when he was shuffled back to the, to the, at the end of the pack pretty much throughout a finish at 23rd. So double whammy there for LaJoy. You feel for it because last year, the cup race at Atlanta, he could have won too. But unfortunately, the incident with Chase Elliott took him out of that chance to win. So it was unfortunate for LaJoy. But one of these will go his way. Hopefully. So definitely there as well. But yeah, it was nice to just see the Craftsman Truck Series back. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it'll continue from there. So, Also, what I didn't mention was in the broadcast as well. It wasn't Vince Welch anymore since he left Fox Sports. And that was surprising because I didn't see that news coming or anything like that until I, I looked it up. And he was ended up being replaced by Adam Alexander. And yeah, Jamie Little is going to do some races there too. So it's going to be cool to see her do that as well. So yeah, the broadcast itself is definitely different but interesting too. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like. And if you are brand new, subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.